Dear brothers, uh, so last week uh, we studied about the uh, ransom, how Jesus uh, died for the whole world. We studied uh, how one man uh, can die for the whole world. It was only possible because Jesus was a perfect man. And uh, Jesus, being a perfect man, offered his uh, perfect life uh, to only to one man. And uh, who is that one person to whom Jesus died? Can anybody tell me? Adam. Very good. It's a father, Adam. Because Adam was the one who sinned and through whom the sin entered into the world and sin passed upon everybody. So if uh, Jesus uh, can redeem Adam from death, automatically his entire race will be redeemed. So that's how the ransom uh, you see Jesus gave for uh, Adam. And uh, uh, what is the benefit of this ransom? So, what do we see in the Bible? What did we read last week? Uh, what is the benefit of, benefit of this ransom? We saw now last week, uh, as in Adam, who are dying. Who are all dying in Adam. Tell me. All died. All. So, all the people. So, what does the Bible say? In Christ, all shall be made alive. That means, who all should be made alive? All of us who in Christ, wish those will be resurrected. In Christ or without Christ also? In Christ, in Christ, of course. Acts 24, 15. Let us read Acts 24, 15. Vivek brother, Vivek Shankar brother, Emmanuel brother, you are all there online? <laughs> Yes, for the way. Okay, please can you read Acts 24 15? Acts 24 15. Brothers, can somebody read or let me read? Or shall I read? Emmanuel brother, Vivek brother, Stephen brother, who can read? I have no English Bible, so sorry. Okay, Vivek brother. Emmanuel brother, do you have English Bible? Yes, I, I can read now. Bible. Read, please read, brother. And have hope to, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. Very good. See, the, the, there is a resurrection both for the just and unjust. So does it say only Christians? No. It says the just and unjust. So who are the just? These are the justified Christians who believe in Christ. And who are the unjust? Believe. Unbelievers. Unbelievers. So the resurrection is there for everybody. So everybody will come back to life. So when will this happen? When will everybody come back to life? When will this happen? Last week we studied, no? At the second coming. Very good. At the Jesus second coming, all the dead will be raised to life. And that is the time they will all come to the knowledge of truth. Good. So we studied uh, those classes uh, last week. So we will continue uh, with our study, uh, you see, today. And uh, today we are going to see... Uh, important, uh, uh, you see, subject uh, that is called as three worlds. Now, what is this three worlds? Does it mean uh, there are, uh, you see, three planets, uh, three, you see, uh, earth? Uh, is it called as a three world in the Bible? If you see, no. You see, the Bible speaks uh, about the three worlds. Uh, you see, that means uh, three different setups uh, in a same uh, planet earth. Uh, and uh, Bible calls uh, for each and every world as a name. The first world in the Bible is called as the past world. And uh, you see the second world uh, is called as the present world. And the third world uh, is called uh, in the Bible as the future world. So we see there are three words, uh, you see, uh, in the Bible. So let us read a few verses. Uh, second Peter, third chapter. Uh, 5 and 6. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read, brother? Uh, 2 Peter 3, 5 and 6, brother? Uh, I have only Nepali Bibles at the moment. Oh, you also have Nepali Bible. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, brother. Abhishek, brother, do you have English Bible? 
Yes, I have. Wait, a, wait a minute. Okay. Can you read Second Peter three, five and six, brother? Shall I read? Ah, okay, Stephen, brother, please. For this, they are willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. See, the world that then was perished uh, by the water. So it says the world that was there, the first world was perished in the water. You see? And uh, uh, one special thing about this was it also says that uh, the heavens were of old. Uh, you see? And uh, the earth uh, standing out of water and in water. So in the world, there is a heaven and there is an earth. Okay, this is about the first world. Let us read about the second world in Galatians 1 4. Galatians 1 4. Abhishek, brother, do you have English Bible? Can you read? Yes, okay, okay. Uh, Gal Galatians 1 4. Yes. Yeah? Galatians 1 4. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father? Very good. So the present evil world, you see, that is the second world. The third world, the Bible says in Hebrews 2 5. Hebrews 2 5. Uh, Stephen, mother, can you read? Hebrews 2 5. Stephen, mother, you're there? Okay. Anshish Mother, can you read Hebrews 2 5? Sorry, sorry, sorry. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. Okay. So the world For unto to come. the angels. Thank you, thank you. The world to come. Yeah. So the world to come. So God is not going to give to the angels. So these are the three worlds uh, the Bible speaks. Uh. So today we're going to see in detail about the three worlds. But today, you see, we'll be speaking and studying only about the first world. So about these three worlds, it is given in a single chapter. That is Second uh, Peter 3rd chapter, verses 5 to 7 and verse 13 also. So let us read uh, verse, uh, you see, uh, 7 uh, in uh, English. Second Peter. Third chapter, verse 7. Uh, Abhishek, brother, can you read? Second Peter, verse Third three. chapter, verse 7, brother. <clears throat> verse 7. <clears throat> but the heavens and earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved into fire against the day of Judgment and prediction of ungodly men. Very good, brother. See, the heavens uh, which are now, uh, you see, huh? and the earth uh, which are now, but the heavens and earth which are now are reserved unto judgment. Uh, you see, that means uh, the present uh, evil world is going to be destroyed by fire. We are at the first world, how it was destroyed by the water, the flood. The second word, it says, is going to be destroyed by fire. Okay. Read verse 13 also, Abhishek. Brother. Let us see about the third world. 13? Yes. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelt righteousness. Aha. Uh -huh. We look for a new heaven, a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So, that's the new heaven, new earth. That's the third world. Okay. Now, in the first world, you see, when was it? We read that the first world was destroyed by the flood. That means this first world should have been before the flood. So we see in the Bible that during the days of Noah, there was a great flood. So hence, this world should have been from the creation of Adam till the flood. 
So in the beginning, what did God create? If you see in Genesis 1.1, it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You see? So God created the heaven and the earth. Okay. Now, let us read what God created on the second day. In verse 8. Uh, Stephen, brother, please read Genesis 1.8. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay. So God created a firmament and he called the firmament as heaven on the second day. You see, dear brethren, see, uh, in the verse 1, uh, it is given that God created the heaven and the earth. If God had created the heaven on the first day, why did God call the firmament as heaven on the second day also? Why did God do two heavens? Did God create two heavens? You see? No. Then what is the meaning of this one? Actually, you see, in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, when it says that God created the heavens and the earth, it means that heavens are the outer universe. The, you see, the way the planets, the stars are there, the outer universe, that outer universe is called as heavens in the Bible. You see, that's what David says in Psalms 19 chapter verses 1 to 3. It says, the heavens declare the glory. You see, and the firmament, the handiwork, the heavens, which is this heaven? If you see the brethren, the heavens are, you see, the outer universe. You see, the outer universe where there is a lot of stars, planets, all those things, that is uh, uh, mentioned in the uh, first uh, uh, day where it says that, uh, you see, God created the heavens and the earth. So initially God created the entire universe and in that universe, God created the earth. Okay. Now, what is the God created the second day? We will study that one also in shortly. Okay. So after God creating this uh, universe and he created earth, made as a habitable place for Adam and Eve. They were the first parents who were created on this earth. And during those days, you see, the human beings were so beautiful. You see, not as these days that uh, there is a lot of discrimination, the differences between human beings. But during those days, all the human beings, uh, they were just, uh, you see, uh, created uh, by God and they were so beautiful to look at. Uh, and uh, man used to live for a period of 900 years. You see, Adam himself lived for 930 years, Noah 950 years. The maximum lead was uh, Methuselah who lived for 969 years. So what was the secret? That man was so beautiful and they used to live for such a period. You see, huh? food. So what food did they eat in the first world? You see, did they eat... Uh, uh, you see, uh, chicken, mutton, uh, non-vegetarian. Uh, how is it? Uh? Uh, who can tell? What did the uh, man eat in the first world? What did they eat? Uh, they eat the herbs. Yeah, herbs. Huh? Herbs and fruits. Herbs and fruits. Okay, Abhishek, brother, how about you? Yeah, herbs and vegetation. Okay, good. Let us read Genesis 129, brother. Genesis 129. Can somebody read? And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Mm. See? It shall be for meat. So, dear brethren, uh, it says that uh, all the, you see, uh, herbs, uh, you see, these uh, were given as meat for man. That means man in the first world was pure vegetarian. There was no non-vegetarian at all. Okay. Man was pure vegetarian. So what about the animals? Uh? So what about the wild beast? What did they eat? What did they eat? Emmanuel brother, what did they eat? 
the animals. What did they eat? Vivek, mother, what did they eat? They, were, they also were vegetarians. They were also vegetarians. Vegetarians. Oh, let us see what the Bible says. Genesis one thirty. Uh, can uh, Abhishek, brother, can you read Genesis one thirty? <clears throat> okay, I read. Mm. Okay. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeped upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. See, I have given every green herb as meat for every beast of the earth. That means even the animals were pure vegetarian. Dear brethren, so... Uh, was there rain in the first world? You see, uh, nowadays there is a lot of rain, no? Uh, thunder showers and all. So what about the rain? Was there rain in the first world? Let us see what the Bible says. Uh, Genesis 2.5. Genesis 2.5. Can somebody read Genesis 2.5, brother? And every plant of the field before it was on the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. You see, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. So in the first world, there was no rain at all. Okay, if there is no rain, then what about the plants, the trees? How will they get the water source? If you see, the dew was going, you see, early morning, if you go... In some very chill places, uh, you will see, no, uh, the mist uh, will be there, uh, morning dew. So that was actually watering all the plants uh, and trees uh, in the first world. Continue reading uh, Genesis two six. Uh, Genesis two six, brother. Huh? But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. You see, but there went up a mist uh, from the earth uh, and watered the whole face of the ground. So that was uh, actually a mist that went uh, and watered the entire uh, earth. Okay. Then why did God destroy this first world? What was the secret uh, of the first world? Why man lived for such a, a long life? And uh, they were all uh, pure vegetarian. So why did God destroy this first world? And why did God create uh, heaven on the second day also when he was already created on the first day? So what is the meaning of this one? So let us study what actually God created on the second day. Uh, Abhishek brother, read Genesis first chapter 6 and 8. And God okay. said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the water which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the, mor and the morning were the second day. Uh, see, what did God create? You see, he says, God separated the waters from the waters. He divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. You see? And it was so. So waters were divided, it seems. The water above and water below were separated, it seems. Now you tell me, which is the water below? Which is the water that is below? The sea. The sea. Abhishek brother, Vivek brother, Emmanuel brother. At least you can answer now if you don't have English Bible also. It's the sea. It's the sea. The... Oh, yeah. Good. Very good. Okay. Now, what about the waters which are above? Which is that waters that is above? Huh? It must be the clouds. It must be the clouds holding the water. It rain water. The clouds, rain water. Okay. Abhishek with that? Yes. Uh, in Hebrew Bible, it is written uh, Tohu Habohu. Oh. So, what is that one? What do you think? Is uh, it is yeah. uh, what clouds? No, not clouds. It is uh, in uh, Jewish scriptures. Tohu uh, uh, Tell me the meaning. 
it is written to abu uh, i as i have uh, learned that uh tell me what is the meaning forget about hebrew and greek uh, because we don't understand hebrew and greek the word is there okay i understand but what actually it means uh, what do you think it means uh, uh, to who means a void and uh, uh, bohu means abyss uh, okay. no, no, thank you that. thank you Okay. Well, it is, is it the atmosphere? The atmosphere. One minute, brother. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Vivek, brother, would you like to answer? Okay. Let us see. You see uh, that picture clearly. God said, he said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, divided the waters which were under the firmament. That is C. Okay, we agree it. That is C. But it also says, divide the firmament above the, you see, huh? waters uh, above the firmament. Uh, I'll read for you, you see. And divided the waters which were under the firmament. Uh, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament as heaven. You see? That means, there was a firmament which separated the waters from the waters that were below, from the waters that were above. And that firmament was called as heaven. That means sky. That means the place where clouds are there. Okay, but the Bible clearly says there was a water above this one, it seems. Sir. Now, which is this water? You see, this is the beautiful creation of God, which God actually created on the second day. You see, there was an earth, there was a globe. Okay, and above it, there was an earth atmosphere. You see, where there are a lot of layers, uh, you see, ionosphere, ozone layer, all the things are there, no? Huh? See, that is the atmosphere, that is the firmament. And God called the firmament as sky. God called the firmament as heavens. You see? But above this firmament, there was a water layer, it seems, dear brethren. And that was the water canopy. The earth was completely engulfed in a complete water canopy. This was the beautiful and the wonderful creation of God. See, you can see in this video, you see, there is a water that is on the land surface. But above it, there is, a, you see, earth, atmosphere, where clouds and all these things are there. But above it, the entire, you see, globe was completely covered with, you see, water. You see, completely covered with water. A water canopy was there. So, it was completely covered with water canopy. Hence, uh, dear brethren, uh, so therefore, uh, this was a special creation of God. It was like, uh, you see, if you go to uh, some uh, uh, Hong Kong or Singapore and all, you can just walk inside the glass tunnel, inside the sea. So if you go inside the glass tunnel, the water won't touch you. But there is a water above you. Why? Because there is a glass structure that is... Uh, you see, preventing it. Uh, that's called as a water canopy. Similarly, in the first world, God had created this water canopy and because of which, the harmful rays, uh, you see, you should, you should, it used to never come and hit the earth. That is the reason that man began to live for a period of 900 years. 962 years, 169 years. It was so beautiful. There was no rain at all. Everything was pure vegetarian. Then why did God destroy such a beautiful world? Just imagine, dear brethren, the environment is very good. You see, there's a lot of uh, good things, uh, you see. And uh, what is there? Uh, man is living for a, such a long life. Uh, no non-vegetarian, you see. But... Uh, Lot of good things are there. Why did God destroy it? What actually happened in the first world? You see, it uh, the Bible says, you see, God had given the in charge of the first world 
to the angels to rule over mankind and to guide them. Let us read Hebrews 2.5. Hebrews 2.5. Abhishek Badar, can you read Hebrews 2.5? Okay, I will read. Okay. Hebrews <laughs> 2 5. Hmm. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection in the world to come, whereof we speak. See? Unto the angels, sir. Huh? He had not put into subjection the world to come. What does it mean? That means sometime God had put it into subjection. Okay? Like for example, if you say that from tomorrow I am not going to play cricket. What does it mean? So until today you are going to play. You have been playing. So previously you were playing. So similarly when God says he is not going to give to the angels. That means he had once upon a time he had given. So when he had given, if you see the brethren, that was during the first world. You see, when uh, Lucifer, you see, became a great adversary of God, when he became Satan, that is the time God next gave the in charge to the holy angels. And during that time, the angels were given a wonderful privilege to manifest and demanifest in the flesh. So we all know angels are spirit beings. They don't have fleshly body as we have. They are all spirit beings. They are all having spiritual bodies. Okay, But during the first world, the angels were given the opportunity to manifest in the flesh. That means to leave their spiritual realm and come in the flesh and manifest in the flesh and live as human beings among the humans. And whenever they did not want they can again change back to the angelic nature. That privilege to manifest and demanifest, God had given to the holy angels. But you know what did the angels do? When they came and manifest in the flesh, they sinned against God. But is there an example in a Bible that the angels manifested in the flesh? Do anybody know? Do you know any examples who came about the angels coming in the flesh? Yes. Do you know? Ah, yes. Who okay. yes. When sons of God means uh, in Hebrew, Irin, they uh, uh, took uh, the daughters of men of uh, the lineage of Ken, uh, the, the Ken daughters in marriage, and uh, therefore they were giants. Uh, Rephaim, Korim. Thank you. Apart from that one, you have any examples of angels coming in the flesh? Emmanuel, brother, do you know any angels who came in the flesh? Here we see Genesis 18, verses 1 and 2. Hmm. We see hmm. three angels before Abraham and uh, his wife, Sarah. Very good. So, angels have come in the flesh. We have seen, we can study in the Bible, a lot of examples of three angels came and visited Abraham. And one angel fought with Jacob the entire night, you see. And uh, you see, huh? Gideon, you see, and the Joshua, before entering the Canaan land, you saw an angel was manifest in the flesh. A lot of examples are there. You see, Samson's parents, uh, they saw the angels and uh, Mother Mary, she, she saw Gabriel. So there are a lot of examples in the Bible where the angels are manifested in the flesh. So similarly, in the first world, when the angels came in the flesh, they saw this beautiful woman and they began to marry. This was against God's will. Let us read Genesis 6-2. Genesis 6-2. Stephen, brother. Uh, okay. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. Mm, see, they uh, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, they were very beautiful, and they married whomever uh, they want. Uh, but uh, is it uh, permissible that they can marry? Are they permitted to marry? What does the Bible say? 
You see, does God allow the angels to marry? What does the Bible say? See what our Lord said in Matthew 22.30. Matthew 22.30 and Jude first chapter verse 7. Matthew 22.30. Uh, Abhishek Budar, yeah. can you read? Yeah, I will read. Okay. Matthew 22, 30. Mm. For in resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Mm. They are like angels of God in heaven. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. So there is no marriage concept among the angels. But when they came in the flesh, they married this uh, woman. This was a fornication. Read also, brother. Jude, verse 7, brother. Vivek, brother. Emmanuel, brother. Both of you hope you are listening. Yeah. Thank okay, you. I will read for it. Yes, uh, Jude, Jude, one, Jude one, seven. seven. Yeah. Even as so the Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after a strange place are set Fourth, for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Ah, even uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You see? Read verse 6, brother. Verse 6 also. Ah. Abhishek, brother. Verse 6 also. Okay, I will read one time. Verse 6. And the angels who escaped not their first state but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Mm, you see, even the angels uh, who sinned against God. What is the sin? Verse 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. You see, and the city is about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. So that is the sin that the angels did, that they committed fornication. So once they committed fornication, what happened? Uh, to them, the chains were born. They were not uh, normal human beings. Why? Because the life came from the father, who was an angel, uh, but manifested in the human body. And the mother uh, were uh, human beings. So what happened? It was a hybrid uh, of angel, human, and who were born. If you see it, your brethren, the giants were born. They were very, very gigantic human beings, but they did not have the power of their fathers to go into the spiritual body and again come into the human body because they were not born to angels. They were mothers were, uh, you see, who? They were actually human beings. They were born through human beings, but uh, by the angelic father. Hence, uh, they were only having a gigantic bodies, uh, but they did not have the power to manifest and deep manifest in the spiritual body. They were never given spiritual body. Let us read Genesis 6, cha 6 chapter, Genesis 6 chapter, verse 4 and 5. Stephen brother, can you read Genesis 6, chapter, verse 4 and 5. Brother. There were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Ah, you see, the chains were born. When? When the angels came and married the human beings and they were very famous men. You see, they were renowned men. And because of them, what happened? Uh, the wickedness uh, increased greatly in the earth because they used to dominate and subdue and rule over the normal human beings. Uh, compared to the normal human beings, they were really 50, 60 feet to gigantic giants. Uh, you see? You might wonder, brother, is it a fact that uh, such giants are living? Uh? 
Yes, sir, there is a proof. If you go and search, uh, you see, uh, National Geography, they have done the excavations and all. They have found out bones of this, you see, the chains. Uh, we can see the skull itself is more than six feet. Uh, imagine if a skull is six feet and how much uh, uh, tall that human being should be. They were all nearly 50, 60 feet chains. Uh, they used to rule over this normal human being. Since what happened? What did the Bible say? The earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Now earth was filled with violence means what is the meaning of it? It is not that the stone, the boulders, the trees and the plants were filled with violence but the society in which man lived that was completely filled with violence. You see, it was completely corrupt because of this James and the sky and the heavens. You see, the sky what was there? They were infected with these fallen angels, the father of these giants. So ultimately, the first world was totally corrupt. On the earth, these giants ruled. On the heavens, you see, in the sky, atmosphere, who were ruling? These fallen angels were ruling. Hence, you see, read Job 15.15. What does the Bible say? Job 15.15. Abhishek Buddha, can you read Job 15.15? Job 15, 15, yeah. Hmm. Job 15, 15. Behold, he put no trust in his holy ones. The heavens are not clean in his sight. Ah, he doesn't trust his uh, angels also because the heavens are not clean. He said, God knew that the heavens, uh, the earth atmosphere, from there the fallen angels will rule. That is the reason it is not pure in his sight. So what happened? The first world was completely corrupt. You see, the earth was corrupt means what? Not the little globe, not little planet. But the system, system was totally corrupt. Hence, God decided to destroy this uh, yeah, first world. Therefore, he selected Noah and told him to build an ark. And Noah built an ark and he took all the animals uh, inside the ark. So how many pairs of animals did uh, Noah took inside the ark? Habishak Buddha, how many pairs did uh, Noah took inside the ark? Yes, Yes. How many pairs? Mm. Oh, you don't know. Okay, Emmanuel, brother. How many seven, pairs? Seven. Of Emmanuel, brother. How many pairs did uh, Noah took in the dark? Uh, Emmanuel, brother, you there? Yes, I'm here. Noah took the, all the pairs, male and female. How many pairs? All the pairs, correct, but how many? Seven pairs, brother. Okay, let us read Genesis uh, 7, <laughs> chapter 2 and 3. Okay, shall I? So of every uh, clean please, please. beast, thou shalt. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and the female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and the female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Very good, brother. Thank you. So there we see that uh, Noah took seven pairs. Not of all animals, but of the clean animals. You see, but of the unclean, he took only one pair, male and female. Why? Because he had to offer sacrifices to God. And that was to be only clean. If he offers a sacrifices to God, if the generation will come down, that is the reason God took, huh? God told Noah to take seven pairs of clean and a pair of, uh, you see, unclean animals. Okay. Noah entered into the ark. You see, then what happened? Uh, huh? There was a rain for 40 days and 40 nights, it seems. Let us read Genesis 7, chapter 11 and 12. Abhishek Badar, please read Genesis 
सेवन चैप्टर इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व ओके इन द सिक्स हंड्रेड इयर ऑफ नोवास लाइफ इन द सेकेंड मंथ द सेवेंटीन डे ऑफ द मंथ द सेम डे वेर ऑल द फाउंटेन्स ऑफ द ग्रेट डीप ब्रोकन ऑफ एंड द विंडोज ऑफ हेवन वेर ओपन एंड द रेन वॉज अपन द अर्थ फोर्टी डेज एंड फोर्टी नाइट द रेन वॉज अपन द अर्थ फॉर फोर्टी डेज एंड फोर्टी नाइट Now we just now saw that there was no rain in the first world at all. It was only dew that was coming. Then how did it rain for forty days and forty nights? How did it rain? How did it rain? Who can tell? Who will tell? The answer is given in verse eleven only. Yes, God must have broken the canopy. Canopy, as you say. Very good. That's what mm -hmm. Bible says in verse eleven. Read, brother. Read that verse again, brother. Abhishek, brother, please read that verse again. Genesis seven, eleven yeah. verse. In the six hundred year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day where all the Fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. Ah, see, brother, windows of heaven were opened. That means what? Da? The water canopy which was above that was broken. That was opened. What happened? All the water that were above, it came down on earth in a form of a rain. It rained for forty days and forty nights. The entire earth was flooded. So, what happened in the flood? Da? All the human beings who had that angelic blood in them, they all died. You see, the water canopy, you see, that was broken completely. You see, hence there was a heavy rain. So, dear brethren, so that is how the canopy was broken. Okay, then if all the human beings died, what about the giants? The giants also, they also, you see, they were also drained and they also died in the flood. You see, they were gigantic beings, but they did not have the power to manifest and demanifest in the flesh. Okay, these giants died, but what about their parents? What about the fathers uh, who were angelic uh, and human beings? Uh? When the flood came, they were in human bodies. Uh, they escaped. Uh, you see, in spiritual body, where did they escape? Uh? Did they go to heaven? No. When the flood came, you see, they demanifested, you see, from the human being to angelic body, and they never went to heaven because God did not receive them back to heaven. They are bound in earth's atmosphere. Let us read Second Peter two four, brother. Second Peter two four. Abhishek, brother, can you read Second Peter two four? Okay, I'll read. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. See, God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Which is the chains of darkness, outer universe, out at earth atmosphere, where there is only darkness. Sir. They are bound there. You see, they now have no more the power to manifest and demanifest in the flesh. That power was totally taken away during the flood. Uh, hence, what happened? All the giants uh, they died in the flood, uh, and these uh, angels are bound in earth atmosphere. So this is how the first world was totally destroyed by the flood. Uh, And Noah, he was in the ark, you see, for more than one year, and that ark came and rested on Mount Ararat. And after that, Noah came out from the ark and offered sacrifices to God. And thus, God made a covenant with Noah, saying, "In future, I won't destroy the entire earth by a flood." You see, and the token of that covenant was that God placed a rainbow in the sky. You see Genesis nine thirteen. Read, brother Stephen, brother read Genesis nine thirteen. 
I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Hmm. Token of covenant, covenant between me and the earth. You see. So what happened? So this is how the first world was destroyed. The first world was destroyed means what? Did the the planet Earth? Did the globe? Was it destroyed by the flood? No. No one came and rested on the same planet, same earth. You see, Mount Ararat, it was not on a different planet. Then, what does it mean when the Bible says that the heavens and earth were destroyed? Earth was destroyed means what? The angelic ruling on this earth, the society was completely corrected by them. That system was destroyed. Their ruling was destroyed. And in the heavens, uh, these fallen angels, uh, you see, they were ruling. They used to come and manifest and demanifest in the flesh. Uh, you see, that was completely destroyed in the flood. You see, therefore, in the Bible, you see, there's a language. We are studying in the first class now how to study the Bible. There are various languages in the Bible, 10 languages, 10 types of uh, languages in the Bible. So this is not a direct language at all. When the Bible says that the earth, earth means society in the Bible. The world means society in the Bible. Like for example, let us read Genesis 6.11, brother. Genesis 6.11, brother. Abhishek, brother, can you read Genesis 6.11? Okay, I will read, I will read. The earth wa also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. See, the earth was filled with violence. What do you mean by earth was filled with violence? Does it mean uh, that uh, stone, the boulders, the mountains, uh, uh, the trees, the plants, those were filled with violence? No. Earth means what? Earth means the people, the society. You see, the environment. Uh, you see, where a man was living, that was completely filled with uh, violence, uh, you see. Therefore, it is this system that was destroyed. You see, the very famous verse, huh? let us read John 3.16. Stephen, brother, read with her. John 3.16. Brother, you are there? John 3.16. Okay, Abhishek brother, can you read John 3.16? Is it God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life? Hmm. See, God is so that? loved the world. World means oh, what? Again. Did God love the people? The people correct. So people, the society, you see? That is what the Bible says. Uh, this is the way we, re we should uh, read the Bible. Here a little, there a little. Search the scriptures uh, for the Bible. Bible is a dictionary. So similarly, when the Bible says that the world was destroyed, what was destroyed? Uh, the system was destroyed. Uh, you say, dear brethren. Therefore, read 2 Peter 3rd chapter 5 to 6, brother. You see? 2 Peter 3rd chapter 5 to 6. Hmm. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that, that then was being overflowed with water perished. Perished. You see? Huh? The world that then was See? What perished. does it say? It says, huh? the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water, whereby the world that then was was perished. So, the world was destroyed means what? That system of the angel human hybrid dominating and ruling of this world, what that setup was completely destroyed in the flood. The earth, the literal globe was never destroyed at all. The earth stayed there only. No one landed on the same earth. So, this is about the first world. Okay? So, we will study about the second world and third world in the coming week.